Hello, I am your everyday average Jonathan. Join me this week as I take this and this and make it into this, a custom hunting knife. Hello, I am your everyday average Jonathan. I'm an ordinary guy with ordinary tools making extraordinary items. I am a self-taught craftsman. I'm an amateur blacksmith and a novice woodworker. I have no professional training, but your basic assortment of tools that I've cobbled together over the years. This week, the project that I'm gonna take on is simple. It's just going to be a hunting knife that I was commissioned to make, but the way I was commissioned is actually, in my mind, a little bit cute and a little bit humorous, so bear with me. Recently, I've had the siding on my house redone, restained, re resurfaced, and the contractor that was doing it, at about the fourth day in the project, approached me and he said in this sort of, sort of this gentle, semi-meat way hey hey man uh, uh, do you he kind of said hey do you uh, hey man do you do you do you like make like uh, like knives and stuff of course my response was yes I do I make all sorts of things uh, what are you looking for and he says would you would you would you man would you make me a knife and I said absolutely what type of knife are you looking for and he said he, I said, there's a lot of designs. What would you like? He says, I'm just looking for, you know, a hunting knife, something that I can take out on me with when I go hunting and something that has a bone handle or an antler handle. And then my next question was, would you like this knife to be really, really stupid sharp? Would you just like it to be basically knife sharp? And he says, oh, no, no, just, just not super sharp because I, I, I tend to do a little, tend to, to do a little bit too much of this when I'm out on these hunting trips. All of this just cracks me the heck up. He is a truly, truly nice guy and he's a very good contractor. So I'm happy to do it for him. So without further ado, let's get to the shop and get started. Oftentimes I do request that a, a customer that commissions me will give me carte blanche to create the design that I would like to create. This was no different. There are a billion different hunting knife designs out there and they're all really, really cool. But this one is just one that, uh, that I saw somewhere that I liked. I kind of just uh, pirated it from a design I saw somewhere online. So I'm cutting this out of, as you saw, an old saw blade and saw blades are just notoriously good steel for blade making. And I, and he asked for a bone handle or an antler handle, and I don't have any good bones about that I would, that I would use. Um, and I'm certainly not going to use that cow horn that you see there. So I grabbed an antler. I've got quite a few of those from, from my, my ranch and the, the national forest around my ranch. Um, and the antler was going to be the handle. So it, I think I've done an antler handle. Actually, I have done an antler handle before. And they come out good. They're they're very pliable. They're very easily uh, usable material. I'm not certain if this is exactly the right process to use with an antler. It certainly can be used for pieces of wood, but heating up the this little tang right here, and then getting it essentially red hot and placing the antler, burning the antler handle onto it, uh, was what I chose to do. I don't think it was really. I don't think it came out as good as I was hoping that it would. There was some some looseness in the tolerance, as I would just say. So the profile so far is looking pretty good. I, I don't like the transition between the antler and the blade itself. Uh, it just it just doesn't look quite right to me. Uh, but I'm using a little bit of JB Weld here, and in the JB Weld they say they have little, um, I guess, little uh, filaments of metal in there. So it it, it worked great. It's a, it's a great. Uh, I u normally use epoxy, but in this particular time, JB Weld was all I had, and it worked great. Okay, now comes time to hone this and get this blade really sharp. This tool I use a lot. Uh, you've seen, if you've seen my other videos, you'll see me using this a lot. It allows me to sort of eyeball it. And as you can see here, it actually was very, very sharp. Uh, so I'm very pleased with that. I was going to attempt to do my artist's touch mark, my, my Smith's touch mark, and I was going to try to burn that into the antler. This really failed. This did not turn out the way I wanted it to. It just looks <laughs> shoddy to me. 
I have lots and lots of old other scraps laying around, so I was just going to go make a quick sheath for this, something that it can cling to. I was trying to do it without having to make what I would call a tether um, or something that loops over the handle and fastens, and I was able to do that just with, with pure um, tension. It holds really well. It's nice and snug in there. I do like it. And here it is in its glory. Um, it is uh, a little bit of a Frankenstein amalgamation of all sorts of interesting components and things that just don't really seem to blend together. But I'll let that be in the eye of the beholder. Well, thank you for joining me for this build. This build was a very straightforward, very, very simple build. It came together really fast. All right, three things straight in. First off, every bladesmith, every knife maker, every implement maker, we're always looking for different sources of good steel or of good metal, of good iron. Saw blades, leaf springs, things like that, that just make really good implements. You can heat treat them, you can get them hardened, you can also soften them and anneal them. Saw blades, like I used for this, they're actually excellent, excellent steel. They're already made, of course, for hardened work for something like cuttings. So they're really made to hold an edge. So that's really nice. That's the first thing. The second thing is I want to give a shout out to Justin at Hope Knives. Justin has this really cool Facebook presence where he makes really, really cool knives with his daughter and he donates them or he donates the proceeds of them to a really great charity. He's the one that showed me how to coat this with pewter or with solder. As the recording of this video, I have yet to do that. I'm going to do that soon. So hopefully I don't screw it up. But thank you, Justin. You spent a lot of time helping me with various things here and there. So I really appreciate that, Justin. The third thing is when sharp Sharpening this blade that has this side of the blade and then this angle right here, this one and this one. It's very fascinating. I'm trying to figure out how knife makers do this and maintain this tight of an angle because as I'm sharpening up this direction, I'm getting all of this stuff up to this point right here. But then when I start to sharpen it down this side, I'm actually hitting that point a second time. I'm double hitting it. So I'm actually eating into the metal there that's the body of this knife. So I had to be really, really careful when I came up this direction or down that I didn't overdo that to, to really to really start to degrade and, and remove too much metal. So I'm trying to figure out how knife makers do that. I should look into that a little more. Final piece for me, I am not digging this knife. I'm not digging this final product at all. I don't like the way it turned out to me. It looks like it was made in some hillbilly fashion in a hillbilly shop, which is most likely true, but I just don't like the way it turned out. The look of it feels shoddy to me. It's it's very sharp. It's a good it's a good steel. The the scabbard did turn out pretty nice. It holds it really well. It's not going anywhere. The antler is is on there nice and tight. It's not coming off. Just the overall profile, it just I don't like it. It just doesn't look all that great. It looks like a self-taught person made this. That's that's all I'm gonna say. He offered to pay me. I'm I'm, I'm not gonna charge for it. I give this knife the grade of a D, this project the grade of a D. I just don't like the way it turned out. Thankfully, I think that the gentleman who is receiving this is not going to be looking at my YouTube channel. I don't think I'm not sure I'm not going to tell him to look at it because I feel embarrassed. All right, onwards and upwards to something different. Next week, join me. I will be starting the second of three commissions that I have stacked up, and that's going to be and that's going to be a semi ornate or actually very ornate wooden sword that is meant to hang onto a wall with little hooks on it for a granddaughter who's into the martial arts for her to hang her medals on, which is which is awesome, right? It's going to be a very stylized looking wooden sword. I can't wait to share that with you then. If you like projects like this that come out a little better than this whimsical builds, swords, armor, practical items, uh, pieces of art. Please check out my channel for other builds where I've taken on projects like that. Regardless, thank you for joining me. Until next week, God bless. All right, as I mentioned there, I'm getting things a little bit out of order. I did go after recording that and decide to go ahead and put this solder. I'm, it's basically a yeoman's pewter, uh, if you will. And I hate painter's tape. It's just something that makes my life worse. Every time that I use it, it, it just infuriates me. I'm no good at it, but apparently I'm the only one. Everyone else gets along fine with painter's tape, but um, made this sort of this flower around it and then poured the, the molten solder. And you can see it's just dumping out the bottom there. Uh, I did this, I probably made many more of these, poured them in, and in the end, this is what it looks like. It's just a big glob on this antler. And I don't really have the patience or the time to take it off. It's, it's very fascinating looking, so I decided to leave it on and shine it up a little bit as you see here. Um, it is interesting. Justin from Hope Knives is probably scratching his head and wondering what the heck I did with the advice that he gave me but it looks like almost like a florette on there. And then the way it sort of wraps into the antler, I actually think that is kind of cool, but we'll see if the, uh, if, if the customer, uh, like I said, I'm not charging him. We'll see if he thinks it's cool. And here it is. 
the final product. Still give it a D, maybe a D plus.